Hey guys, thanks for coming back to the channel. We're gonna talk about canning today. It's almost that time of year, so it's time to start dusting off the canning supplies. So come along. All right guys, for, the, for those of you that are new to the channel, if you would kindly hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, it's free and it really helps us grow. Uh, helps us to keep bringing videos to you guys. This is all part of our urban homesteading series and we're gonna talk about canning today. Uh, we have been in this house in California for 19 years and we had started growing a garden in the backyard. And I grew up gardening in Oregon and we always had tons and tons of produce. And with, a, with a big family, the, we had to preserve a lot of that food because it didn't obviously stay all the way through the winter time, right? So as we started growing a garden here, our, our, our bushes and tomato plants and everything was producing just so much food and we, instead of giving it all away, like, well, we wanna have those vegetables and, and, and whatnot throughout the winter time instead of having to go to the store and buy them. Saving us money and everything, it's healthier. So we started canning. I grew up canning. Uh, I went and bought a bunch of canning supplies and it was amazing how, how cheap it was to actually can your own food and to preserve your own food, preserve your own food. Uh, and how, how delicious it tasted. However, uh, Olivia, my wife, had never done any canning before. And she was honestly, she was a little afraid of the pressure canner. So we're gonna talk about a couple of things today. Hopefully this will take the fear uh, and the, uh, the scare out of using a pressure canner. Uh, it's really, really easy. So we're gonna talk about that today and we'll talk about the pressure canner here in just, in just a little bit. So right now I'm gonna show you all the different items for canning. Um, we'll talk about different types of food that you're going to be canning. There's only two types. There's going to be a high acid and a low acid type of food. And depending on what kind of food it is that you're preserving, determines which process that you're going to use. All right, so first let's talk about the two different types of foods that you're going to be uh, canning. You're going to can a low acid food and a high acid food. Now, all of, the, all of you people that are out there canning have been canning for years and years and years. If I've missed anything, please leave a comment down there and let me know if I messed something up. Uh, I'm not a professional by any means, and this is not an actual official instructional video for how to can, but at least to give you guys some ideas and, take, and, and, and share with you guys the experience and the knowledge that, that I have gained when I was a kid growing up in our family, as well as what we have gained here in our urban homestead here in California. All of these skills that we have learned, we're gonna be using at our homestead up in Idaho when we move up there later at the end of this year, or first of next year. So this is gonna be invaluable information and, and skills that we're gonna be using when we move up there. We're gonna have a big garden, we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a greenhouse. Uh, we're gonna eventually be canning meat. Uh, I have already canned some meat and I'll talk about that in just a little bit uh, after we talk about some of the, uh, the different types of food. So you have the high acid and you have the low acid. So preserving food, is basically making sure that the food doesn't spoil. Okay, so there's two ways to do that. You basically need to kill all of the bacteria that is in and on the food. Now, a high acid type of food, uh, bacteria is not gonna grow in, or it takes a long time for that bacteria to grow. It has a hard time growing in a high acid environment. A high acid environment is gonna be anything that has uh, a lot of vinegar in it, or a lot of citric acid, like uh, lemon, orange, or tomatoes, or peppers, or a high sugar content, like your jams and your jellies and your pie fillings, anything that has a high sugar content. H high acid uh, keeps the bacteria from growing, okay? When you have an, a high acid food that you're gonna can, you only need to bring the temperature of that item up to boiling, 212 degrees, okay? And that's gonna kill 99%, 99.9% of all the bac bacteria in there. Whatever's in there is gonna have a hard time growing and spoiling your food. Botulism is a real thing. People die from it every year. So it's vitally important that you do it right and make sure that you have the, a high enough acid content in your food by either adding lemon juice or lime juice, or you have a vinegar item, or you have a high sugar item. So we have canned jellies, raspberry and blackberry jam. We have canned apple pie filling, which has a, is, is a lot of sugar. Uh, I have also, we have also done uh, pickles, which is just vinegar, basically, vinegar and salt. Uh, and then tomatoes and salsas. And of course, the high acid content of a tomato 
as well as peppers. Uh, you can water bath can those items and you're good to go. And those things will stay on the shelf for, for years. We've had stuff that's been sitting on the shelf for three or four years, totally fine. A lot of people will say you need to eat that stuff within a year and, and that's definitely something that we can, we're gonna work towards is trying to rotate our preserved foods and eat the stuff that we've done, uh, the oldest stuff first and put the newer preserved stuff in the back of the shelf. So they talk about rotating your, your foods, okay? Uh, so those are the high acid items that you're gonna use for a water bath canner. Here's a water bath canner. So it's basically just a big pot. I have a whole bunch of different kinds of screens depending on the size of the jars that I have that I'm gonna be using. Um, most of the jars, most of the time I'm gonna use this kind of a screen and you're gonna set, you can set seven quart jars and then you can pull the whole thing out in one time, at one time if you want. Okay, so that's a water bath canner uh, for all of your high acid type foods. Now when you're doing your water bath canning, the water bath canning you're going to use uh, boiling water and the level of the water is going to cover the top of the jar. You need to cover, bring the water up and once you fill this thing up with water and you have all your jars in there and you bring the water so that it's covering by a quarter to a half an inch. And that's all you need to do. As long as you're covering the tops of the jars and you have water boiling over the top of this, uh, then you're good to go, okay? Now the second type is gonna be your pressure canner. Uh, now this is a Presto, and I got this off of Walmart for 85 bucks. Some of them are a lot more expensive. This is a Presto 23 quart pressure canner and cooker. We could use this for cooking if we wanted to, but we only use this for canning. I got this off of Walmart for 85 bucks and they shipped it right to my house. Now, a lot of people are afraid of a pressure canner because they're obviously a lot hotter and they're under pressure. And a lot of people think that, well, gosh, this, this basically can explode. This particular brand has two safeties built into it. It has, first of all, the weight. Okay, the water, the, the air pressure that's inside here, well, the steam pressure can't get past, I think, what does it say on the, on the, the dial there, honey? 20. 20 pounds. Yeah, you're not gonna be pressure canning anything at 20 pounds. So this is the first safety. This thing, once it hits 20 pounds, it'll, it'll blow this weight. Usually will blow this thing right off. But the other safety is right here. It's a little rubber grommet that's designed to, to pop out if the pressure gets too great. All right, so they are safeties that are built in. Once you lock this thing down, it locks. It is not coming apart. But it's gonna pop that safety or it's gonna pop off this weight before it gets too high, okay? And you can also measure the, the pressure on the gauge right here. And you're gonna, you don't wanna watch that. So this pressure canner, this will get the water temperature up to 240 degrees. So this is what you're gonna to use to, to pressure can and kill the bacteria in all of your low acid foods. All of your low acid foods is gonna be something that you're not gonna add vinegar to, you're not gonna have any sugar in, uh, or it's not going to be a high acid food like a tomato or a pepper or salsa or whatnot. So your green beans have to be pressure canned, most of your vegetables have to be pressure canned, potatoes, and of course all of your meats have to be pressure canned. And that's gonna ensure that you're gonna, ki you're gonna kill off all that extra little bit of bacteria in there. So it's really not that scary to do. You have the safeties built in, and this will take care of everything else that you're not gonna use your water bath canner for. This one, you, when you put the, the, the jars inside, you're only gonna put water in. You're gonna put the jars right in here. You're only gonna bring the water up to, uh, oh, it's this, this first line right here. There's actually some lines inside of here. And it, it tells you right where to bring the water to. Well, anyway, you can see this, the stain on the side, and I, and I need to probably clean that with a little bit of vinegar. Uh, we clean this with a little bit of vinegar every time, but to, after so many times of usage, it's, you're gonna stain the aluminum. Uh, it is an aluminum canner, and, uh, and it works really, really, really good. So when you put water in here, you're only gonna bring the water up to, it's only gonna come up to about halfway on the jar. 
so you're not going to be covering the whole jar with water in a pressure canner. The idea of a pressure canner is that steam is hotter than the boiling water. Steam is, is 240 degrees where boiling water is only 212 and you're using steam to bring the temperature up uh, to kill the bacteria and then get everything and cook everything that's in here. And then as it cools, it sucks the lid down. So any of you that are new to canning and want to learn this, there are a million videos on YouTube to learn how to can. I'm hoping that this is a really simple tutorial to, to take some of the fear out of, of, of the items that we're using for canning, especially the pressure canner. A lot of people are afraid of doing pressure canning because they think that they're, they're going to set up a bomb on their, on their, on their stove. Uh, that's just really not the case unless you're just completely uh, ignorant and you're not following the directions. But let's talk about directions. That'll be the next item. All right, this book right here, guys, came with the Presto Pressure Canner. I use this book before any other book. It's crazy. It has all of your instructions in here. It has how to use this pressure canner. It tells you the poundage that you're going to raise the the uh, the pressure to inside the pressure canner, depending on what food that you're doing. Um, and it has recipes in here. This book is fantastic. And it, like I said, it came with the pressure canner. <laughs> Uh, a couple other books uh, are going to be the canning by um, Better Homes and Gardens as well as the ball book. I've also used this book. It has a lot of awesome recipes in it and this one is put out by ball. And these are recipes that have been coming down from, the genera from for generations of canners from lots of people that have used ball, uh, ball products. You can see how thick that book is. It is chock full of stuff. I got this off of, uh, this was another Borders special. I love cheap books. I think I bought this, I don't know if I bought this at Borders, if I bought this at a garage sale for five or six bucks, but it was cheap. Uh, $23 at Borders, but I know I didn't pay that for this book. Fantastic books. You can see all the different jams and jellies and uh, pickles and salsas and stuff that they have in here. This book I got at Sprouts. Olivia was kind enough to remind me where I got this at, and it was right there on the rack. And it has all kinds of fantastic recipes in here. I don't remember what recipes have we used in here. Um, this one actually has some really neat recipes for uh, canning uh, soups and stuff. So the, the resources are unlimited, guys, as far as where you can buy your books and where you can buy your, buy your canning products. Now let's take a look at the tools that I use for canning all of our stuff here at the house. So this is a 20 quart stainless steel pot and it comes with a glass lid with a little, a little steam vent in here. But we use the stainless steel for mixing our jams and our jellies and anything else that we're going to be cooking. Stainless steel just, it lasts the longest, it's just easiest to clean and you need a big pot for doing all of your items in. You can make do with other pots but the stainless steel, if you can afford to get the stainless steel one, is, is fantastic. The other item that a lot of people have have bought, I've seen all kinds of people buying these, is this basic home canning kit. And it comes with all these neat tools in it. You can get this on Amazon for like $12. The two things in here that I use the most is going to be the magnet for the lid when you have the lids boiling in hot water. And then I have my tongs and I use this tongs for pulling the jars out of the hot water. And then for filling the jars is a funnel. One last thing to think about when you're when you have your pressure canner is that you have to make sure that this rubber safety right here is still soft and rubbery, as well as your rubber ring. Now I've had this pressure canner for probably going on, what would you say, about 10 years now, honey? Mm -hmm. Probably about 10 years. I honestly probably should start thinking about replacing these seals. Uh, I need to probably go online and re and buy the pressure the, the the Presto safety plug as well as the the uh, the seal. You want to make sure that this thing is in good working order. Make sure that all of your little orifices here, where the steam comes in and out, uh, that those are clear. So you make sure you keep these things clean. This is going to be preserving your food, and you're going to be feeding that food to your family. You want to make sure that you have taken every step possible to make sure that food is in, in excellent. As, as good as it can possibly be. Whole point of canning is to save money, right guys? 
to grow your own food and uh, to put it up for the for the winter time and have fresh vegetables and food and soups and whatnot all throughout the winter time. So guys, you can see where we have our apple pie filling right here. We try and keep all of that stuff all organized as well as all of our stuff that's a little bit messy right now because we haven't been in here. We've just been eating all of our, our yummies. We have green beans, we have tomatoes, I have pears, and I have tuna. I'll tell you guys how to make that in a second, as well as uh, our pickles that we've made. Jalapenos. Oh, and jalapenos back there too. That's right. Okay, here's a, here is a box of ball canning jars, and it comes with the lids and the rings on the top. Now, I look for sales. A lot of you guys already know to look for sales on these things. When they go on sale, you got to buy them. I think I bought this for $10 for the dozen, which makes it 75 cents for each jar plus a lid and a ring. That's a pretty good deal. Most of the time they're selling these for about 15 bucks at least down here. So I think that price is pretty pretty average all across the country. You're gonna be in the 12 to $15 range for a dozen jars. Uh, one of the smaller uh, pint jars is gonna be probably in the nine to $12 range for a dozen. When you can buy these things on sale, definitely jump on that too. It's nice to have some new fresh jars. Now, these cans back, th these boxes of jars back here as well as some of these ball jars that I have. Um, I bought those at a garage sale. There was a lady that uh, had, uh, her dad had, to, uh, her son had to actually put her, uh, bring her home for home care. She couldn't live on her own anymore and she had been a huge canner. She had a little shed in the back of her house with probably a hundred of those boxes with 18 quart size can jars in each, in each box. I, at the time, I, sh I should have bought all of them. But he was asking, I think he was asking $10 a box for him. So $10 for 18 jars, that's, that's a pretty decent deal. But to have all that, that many jars all at one time was a pretty good deal. So I bought like 10 of those boxes and we have, we, we've just about maxed out all the jars. We've used, we probably have in any one time after a good gardening season, a hundred and some jars full of whatever we're, we're canning. Uh, canning apple pie filling is one of our favorite things to do. But going to garage sales, uh, that's a great place to find really, really discounted uh, jars. We also got a whole bunch of these quilted mason um, uh, ball jars. Mason does them as well, and they're quilted. They have a nice design on them. You put your jams and jellies and stuff in there, and they're a little more decorative. The other thing that uh, a lot of people had commented on when they were, I was watching some of the other live streams, we were talking about, about canning, was being able to use mayonnaise jars. Now, mayonnaise jars, the glass is awfully thin. And a lot of times, almost all the mayonnaise we buy now comes in a plastic jug anyway. We don't use the, the, the glass jars anymore. But even if you do still get the glass jars, that glass tends to be a little bit thin. They tend to crack a little bit easier inside the uh, water bath or the pressure canner. They can't handle the, uh, the, the, the pressure changes when it goes from hot to cold and whatnot. Uh, but one jar that we have used with high success are, and you buy this at like a 99 cent store or um, even at your local grocery stores, Classico, uh, part of the uh, label is, is missing there, but Classico oh, tomato fun. sauce. Um, there's the back of it right here. This is an Atlas, and it says right, it's stamped right into the glass. It says Atlas Mason. This is a reusable Atlas Mason jar. We used to buy these, uh, app, uh, these um, tomato sauce packets, they came in a three pack at State or, or um, at Sam's Club or Costco. And uh, uh, Olivia used to buy these all the time. We had no idea until one of the ladies in our church said, hey, by the way, you can use these jars. So you buy the jars, you use the, the, the tomato sauce inside, and then you save the jar, and it's a thick glass that you can reuse. I've been wanting to tell everybody that for a long time. Um, measurements on the side too. Oh, that's right, it, does ha it has uh, measurements as far as ounces on the side. So it says four, eight, 12, and 16 ounce right there. Uh, so that is a quart jar right there, and it is actually made by Mason. So this is a reusable jar with thick glass. So a little bit of a hint to you guys, if you guys are buying, take a look at your jars, uh, the Classico brand of tomato sauce, and it's actually not that expensive. It's a pretty um, uh, reasonably priced uh, uh, tomato sauce. All right, guys, let's talk about the elephant in the room. This is the big question and the big debate that everybody has all the time, and that is, can you reuse your lids? Let's take a look at what a lid and a ring comprise of. Now remember, half of the battle in preserving food and canning is to kill off the bacteria. If it's a low acid, 
you're going to use the pressure canner and get that temperature up to 240 degrees. If it's a high acid, then you're going to use the water bath canner and that's going to get the temperature to 212 degrees. That's going to kill off all the bacteria. Now you need to seal that jar. How do you seal that? Here we go. All right guys, this is a ring and this is a lid. Now this lid is manufactured with a soft rubber seal on the inside. It's kind of gooey and you're going to put this into some warm water. You're not going to boil the water, but you're going to get the water hot and that gets this rubber soft. And this lid is manufactured with this rubber stuck to the lid. Now, when you are, what creates the seal? When you are heating up the contents of that jar, you're creating a vacuum. So when you're heating up the contents of that jar, you're creating uh, the, the little bit of air space that you're gonna leave on top of the food and all of your books that you're gonna read and your instruction manuals are gonna tell you, depending on what kind of food it is, you're gonna leave an, at least a half an inch, three quarter, usually three quarters of an inch to one inch of air space between the top of the jar and the top of your food. And what that does is it allows that, that little bit of air in there gets hot. You've cooked off all of the bacteria You've cooked the food, and now all the contents of that jar, after being in that thing for, for 20 minutes or half an hour, are nice and hot. The air that's in that little bit of headspace is also nice and hot. You're gonna, you screw on this lid with the ring, and you do it, uh, you do it snug. You're not cranking the lid down, but you're not leaving it loose either. You want that thing to be nice and tight. And what happens is the air that's inside underneath this is, gonna, is going to expand, and it's gonna push out all the excess air. So the air that's in there is gonna be, it's gonna be thin and it's gonna be hot. And then as it, the jar cools, because you have this little, you have this little rubber ring tied against the glass, it's going to, that air is going to suck that rubber ring down tight against the rim of the glass and it's going to make a airtight seal. And then this, the way these things are designed is they're flexible. You can hear that little popping, right? So what happens is as the air inside the jar contracts, it sucks this lid down tight and it pulls the lid down. And this lid basically acts like a lock washer or, uh, or a spring tension. And so what it's doing is it's pulling that lid down tight and it's sucking down and it's putting tension on this lid pulling it against the top rim of the glass. Does that make sense, guys? So what happens is, let's say that you had a little bit of debris on the top edge of your jar. You, you didn't wipe off the jar when you went to go put this lid on and you water bath canned it, or you didn't leave enough head space and the contents of your jar bubbled over and pushed out into the pressure canner or the water bath canner. And it left a little bit of debris on that top rim of the jar and then that got between the top rim of the jar and this rubber seal. And even though it sucked down tight, it might still suck down tight, but it didn't make a perfectly good seal. And over a period of a, a, a few days, a few weeks, or a few months, it allowed a little bit of air to, just a, the tiniest little bit of air to seep into that jar. Because remember, you, you created a vacuum, and then it allowed that jar to pop up. Uh, I'm sorry, it, it allowed this, this top um, lid it, re it lost its vacuum and it lost its seal. And so that jar has been sitting on your shelf. So when you go, to, before you go to use anything out of your, out of your cabinet, uh, off of your shelves, you wanna test and make sure that you're not hearing that. If you're hearing that on a jar that's been sitting on your shelf for six months, throw it out. It may not look bad. You might not have that black mold, which is botulism, by the way. You might not have that black mold on the top of the food. It may look totally fine. It may smell perfectly fine. If you hear this on the top of your jar that's been sitting on your shelf for, for any amount of time without refrigeration, throw the contents of that jar. Do not even take a chance and take, uh, take, take that risk of giving spoiled food to your, to your family. Okay, that's especially important with your meats vegetables and whatnot it's i mean it's important with everything that you're going to preserve but especially meat that stuff tends to get really bad bacteria in it if you don't preserve it properly if you push down on the top of that lid and you don't and you don't hear anything and it's nice and tight you know that seal is good and then you go to pop the lid and you hear the 
as that as that vacuum sucks air in, you'll hear that lid, uh, the seal popping. You know that you've had a good uh, you had a good seal, and that that food is safe to eat. So that is a safety tip for for today. Uh, all of the instructions are very very clear about making sure you check your jars at the top edge of that of that rim doesn't have any little chips or nicks out of it, and making sure that your lids are in good condition. Now. Let's get back to that question about whether you can reuse these lids. Short answer is no. Everybody's gonna tell you don't do it, don't reuse them. Uh, so do not take what I'm saying for uh, gospel here. I've had lots of people that have 20, 30, 40, 50 years of experience canning say, yes you can, you can do it. Uh, but you have, to do, you have to inspect these lids. So the big thing is, is when you go to pop this lid off, of uh, your jar, sometimes the edge of this lid, this little tin, will get bent, uh, or you nick the little the little rubber seal that's on the inside right here. If if you see any kind of defect in this rubber seal, or you see the, the your lid is bent, there's a good chance it's not going to make a nice tight seal on your jar, and I would not reuse it. If there's any kind of corrosion on the inside coating, if there's any corrosion on the outside, the outside is not so critical, but the inside coating, you definitely don't want to have any corrosion in there. Uh, but the most important thing is going to be the rubber seal and, and the, the integrity of the shape of where that rubber seal is, is stuck to, uh, to this lid. If there's any doubt in your mind, toss it. These things aren't that expensive. Um, I think when you buy this whole Let's see if I get this to focus here. When you buy this whole th box of lids, um, I don't remember how much this box cost. I want to say they were it was three ninety nine, and there's twelve lids in there. So even if it was like just to say three fifty, uh, three three dollars and sixty cents to make the math easy, twelve lids that's thirty cents per lid. That's that's pretty cheap. Um, and the, the thing that you can reuse is going to be the ring. So when you buy, a, say, a, you buy a dozen jars with the rings and the lids on them, for you get them on sale for 10 bucks or 12 bucks, that's a dollar per jar and ring and lid together. That's a pretty good deal. Uh, when you spend, you know, three, four dollars for one of these box of lids, you know, 30 cents a lid, it's really cheap insurance. For me, it's always been about the math. If, if I can preserve the food out of my garden, with no additives to it, and I can save money doing it. I'm a, I have one on both on, on, on all on all counts. Um, when you start replacing lids every single time, um, you just got to figure for every jar of food that you're you're putting up, you're adding 30 cents to the cost of that item versus the free you know the the free food and the cost of your seeds that came out of the garden, right? So a 15 ounce can of green beans or whatnot. Do a dollar to two dollars a can. Let's just go. Let's go cheap and go a dollar. So you figure there's going to be two of those in a 32 ounce quart size canning jar. You can probably you can fit two of those in one quart, right? So you figure on the cheap side you'd be spending two bucks. On the expensive side, more like four bucks. So if you can you can can your own vegetables and you put a brand new lid on every time, 30 cents. Uh, the cost goes down every year, of course, when every time you use that jar and that ring over again. Oh, that's the other thing too, is you don't have to reuse this ring. You don't have to leave the jars with the rings on the shelf. A lot of times, I, I don't have enough rings to cover every jar I have. I only have enough rings to do, uh, I probably have probably uh, four dozen rings, uh, but I have probably 10 dozen jars. So once I do the canning, I take this ring comes off and I leave just the lid on there. You don't need to have this on there. If you want it for the extra insurance and peace of mind to make sure this thing stays tight on there, leave the ring on, okay? So guys, hopefully uh, that little bit of a talk right there about reusing your lids was helpful. Um, if you wanna be absolutely safest, don't reuse the lid. Uh, I have reused lids multiple times over uh, 15 years of canning here in our homestead in California. And, and honestly, I think I've had two jars that went bad. And more than likely it was because something had bubbled over when I was canning it and there was a little bit of contamination between the rubber ring and the top of the jar. 
and it wasn't because the ring, uh, the, the it wasn't because the lid itself was bad or uh, or blemished in any way. It was because of contamination between those those two surfaces. So that's critical to make sure that you have a good a good seating surface. Guys, thanks for coming along today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please leave a comment in the bottom. If I forgot something, please don't hesitate to leave a comment. You guys can email us at Hidden Valley Homestead 18 at gmail.com and uh, we'll see you guys on the next video. Asking you. Yes, I say it's recording. I gave you a thumbs up. <laughs> okay. But you said it was recording before. Honey. What? Come. Don't be so bossy. <clears throat> Remember, I'm the YouTube star. You're oh, not. Oh, yes. I don't need a reminder. <laughs> <clears throat> Just kidding. I would be more of a star if you were in the videos with me. You're going to help me with this, right? I'm filming. Yeah, we're gonna get you get you in the picture. No, my hair's not done. Oh, so what? Go. Thanks for coming back to the channel, guys. Today we're gonna talk about canning. This is a. Uh, it's almost time. I hate that. I always think about things as I'm talking. I think about what I'm gonna say. Think about something different to say.